Today we get an in-depth look at the secret world of goalkeeping. I'll be joined by Wrexham GK Mark Howard to help me put some famous goalie myths to the test. Myth busted, it works. It definitely works. Goalies should not get beat at the near post. Absolute myth, Kieran. Really? Uh, being beat at the near post is an absolute myth. You, you can't overcover your near post because then you're writing off any shots across your goal. And every striker we all know aims across the goal the majority of the time. So I took some shots at the near post and Mark explained the dangers of goalkeepers only focusing on one side. So you, if I gave you the near post, it should make it a harder save. If I went narrower, I'm giving you more opportunity to do that. It's, it's definitely more humiliating because of what the press will say or a commentator will say is... Where is the goalkeeper? So that's the near post myth busted. I think sometimes people forget that keepers have a whole goal to worry about. Myth number two, goalies can't use their feet. It's a liar. We're all good with our feet. We're all failed outfielders, but we all want to play out from the back. And it's an absolute myth. We love playing football, mate. We're just as good in training, passing the ball out from the back. I've put the gloves on. We've got Mark outfield. Gonna take some shots and see what he's got in the locker. Let's see. GoPro broken. I would say that's myth busted. Goalies need to be tall. That's another myth. All of these seem like myths. Uh, Ika Casillas, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Yeah. You look at Shea Given in the Premier League. These are all goalkeepers that were just six foot, maybe a bit smaller. If you're a small goalkeeper, you generally play deeper on your line, like a Hugo Lloris, but you're very fast across your goal. Where the bigger goalkeepers can afford to play a bit higher and make more blocks. So is there a height that's too small for a keeper? Is 5'7 too small? Definitely is too small. So it's not a myth that yeah. there are two smaller keepers, yes. Okay. Goalies will dive before the penalty is taken. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, actually. We like to do a lot of homework and watch as much footage of people taking penalties as we can. But at the end of the day, the ball's only 12 yards away and players can kick the ball up to 100 mile an hour now. So you might have to go a bit early if you've got a read on them. Some penalty takers like that slow run up now and you have to wait like a Jorginho type where you have to, as a goalkeeper, be patient and have enough faith in your own ability to make that save. So I took some penalties at Mark and put the footage in super slow motion. That way you can see exactly when he dives. And as you can see, just as my foot is making contact with the ball, he's already chosen which way he's going to dive. If you get it right, the guess, it's an easy save almost. I also wanted to know if goalkeepers will ever stay in the middle for a penalty. And the answer was pretty interesting, so take notes. Oh, down the middle. That's the hardest one for a goalie. It'd take a brave goalie to stand there for that. So this myth is true. should not concede from long range. We shouldn't concede from long range, but every now and then someone will hit a strike that's just too good to save. Or someone will catch you out from the halfway line and lob you. A lot of the strikes from distance are unbelievable technique or power. So yeah, it happens to us all the time. So I took some long range shots of Mark to test this myth out. And to be fair, I didn't score one goal, but I'm sure he's used to facing better shots than I was able to do. No, getting beat from distance is just embarrassing for any goalkeeper. It's more the how your own players will react to you or your manager, your fans. Obviously getting beat from distance, it happens from time to time. It's not great, but it happens. Another hidden goalie secret that I wanted to look at is around the gloves themselves. Is adding sticky substances to your gloves legal? Well, from what I can see, it's perfectly fine. There doesn't seem to be any rule that officially states you can't improve the performance of your gloves. There's not even any rule saying you've got to wear gloves at all. And this next myth is one that all pro goalies know very well. And some love it and some hate it. So the next myth is the Vaseline one. You know all about this. I know all about this and it does work on extremely wet days. So mm. I've put an old pair of gloves on to show you how this will work. Yeah. Uh, you might be able to hear and see that my gloves have got no grip anymore. They're an old pair of gloves. Let's have uh, a bit of that. Much? So, right, give this a nice little rub in. So you can tell the difference. This plays a huge part in a lot of goalkeepers. It was actually used by the Holland goalkeeper at the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And he put it on the back of his post. A massive dollop of Vaseline and during the game kept going up to his post, touching it, really? reapplying it. It definitely works. Uh, as you can tell, I've revived a pair of gloves and if this was a wet day, I would use it. 
keepers should not take penalties. We should definitely take penalties. <laughs> this is a fact. We are the best ball strikers from a dead ball situation. We've spent our whole lives, our careers, taking goal kicks from a, a standing ball. Outfielders like a moving ball or a, a cut back or a cross. You put a ball down on a spot, goalkeepers will hit the target 10 out of 10. Well, we're going to put that to the test right now. Let's see. So Mark took some penalties and let's just say they were pretty decent. All goalkeepers are crazy. We're, we're different, I would like to say. Uh, we've obviously got different personalities that wires us differently yeah. than, an, than an outfielder. We all like to just get hurt by the ball. We, we like to get our face hit by a ball. That's the fun bit of being a goalkeeper, diving around, getting dirty. Some people call it crazy. We just like to say that we're different. There's nothing the goalie could do. In hindsight, there's always something we could have done. We could have organised the defence better to stop the shot originally. We could have been in a slightly different situation. Our footwork could be slightly different, our hand shape. There's always something when you watch a goal back that a goalie could have done different, but sometimes you just have to applaud the striker. But could you technically reach every point of the goal? Depending on the strike and the shot, yes, technically we can get to every area. And that's why in hindsight, we should do better on every goal. Goalies are just shot stoppers. Well, that is an absolute lie as well. Goalkeepers, the game has changed a lot for us. We're now playmakers. We have to dictate the tempo of a game. We have to pass it out from the back. We have to come for crosses. There's so much more to goalkeeping. And especially as the game's changing, we're asked to do more things and adapt our game. So yeah, if you're not keeping up with a game, you're not going to move on. Mark showed me a few examples of how a keeper needs to also have different aspects to their game. For example, distribution and playing the ball out from the back. Now more than ever, goalies are a lot more than just shot stoppers. If a goal goes in, it's always the keeper's fault. It's never the goalie's fault, <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. We're the last line of defence, we are the villains in football. Yeah. We're trying to stop everyone from having fun and scoring goals. So obviously every goal that goes in, we're going to get the blame. It's natural. Now as much as I don't like to admit it, I think sometimes keepers have to hold their hand up. But this next potential myth is a long debated topic in the world of goalkeepers. Should you save with your top hand or bottom hand? And how do keepers decide which one they'll use? Right, so next up we're going to take a look at the idea of top hand versus bottom hand. I'm going to take some shots at Mark and hopefully he'll be able to explain if it's a myth. There's a good top hand save. The reason why I've gone top hand is I get a bit more of a reach. So as I'm overextending, I can actually reach a little bit further. So that was a bottom hand save. Managed to get a bit more purchase because it's obviously a lower shot. I can dive it and reach a little bit further than I can underarm. Goalkeepers should never take risks. Goalkeepers should take calculated risks. Uh, obviously, when we're playing out from the back, a lot of people worry about us with our feet and uh, they typically say, just kick it out if you're not sure. But if you can beat that first press, that first striker coming towards you, you've then opened up the whole pitch for your team to play. So it's up to your manager to dictate that style of play. That's not normally the goalie. Because there's a lot of times where a goalkeeper gets the ball, he takes a bit too much time on it player comes in and just nicks it and scores a goal. What's happening there? What's he thinking? Yeah, that's obviously, again, that goes back to the managers asking him to play like that. Yeah. So if the manager's asking you to play like that and that keeps you in the team, you're going to have to take some chances. But again, it's up to the goalie at the end of the day. And if it's too tight to call, you have to get rid of it. Goalies should catch everything. That's a myth. It all depends on the type of shot. If someone hits one with absolute power, you're never going to be able to hold it. It's also a, a tactical thing. Every now and then you might have to make a good parry, buy time and get it around the post. You might have to try and catch one because you've got people running in on you. It literally all depends on each individual strike as it comes. So obviously the ones that are straight down my throat, I'm going to try and catch everything. So the ones that are slightly irregular or a bit more powerful are the ones that you're going to parry. So because that had a little bit more power behind it, it's easier for me to make that early decision and just get it away. I, ideally, you'd love to catch everything, but it all depends on how far away the striker is, the power of the shot. So obviously, if I have to take two big steps to do a full extension dive, it's very unlikely that you're going to catch it. 
The weather is a big, dicta big dictator as well. So if it's wet, you might make that decision up of like, I'm not, I'm not taking the chance of carrying this in case I drop it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, testing out some of the most famous goalkeeper myths. I think a lot of them got busted today. I think we've proved <laughs> a few of them are wrong. We've also filmed a video on Mark's channel, the Yours Mine Away podcast. So go check that out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.